Yes. Voodoo. It's that type of day. That's what we're doing. Good morning, Kristen. It's MS Awareness Month. Wear your orange. One more time. This is Buju. Hills and valleys. Let's go. It's a beautiful, beautiful Sunday. Yes. Good thanks. What's good? What's good, fam? You? What's good, FIU? Florida Memorial, St. Thomas, UM, Barry University. Shout out to the Hunger Nine out in. Liberty City, standing up against gun violence. Yes. Estimate. <laughs> yes, and we're back. Uh, good morning, all to uh, all the kind people out there. Uh, 
Hope you're having a great day so far. If you're not, you're getting ready to get up and do whatever you're doing. Give your best effort at whatever you're doing today. So if you're resting, give all you've got to actually uh, rest, power up, do what you have to do. Uh, if you got that paper, that project that's due tomorrow, get on it because you procrastinated enough during the week. Uh, hmm. Okay. Now, Kristen is asking a question, and I'm going to answer that in a the, in the, in the second question. Um, we're talking about MS, MS stories. Going to be having a great guest on today. Her name is Erin Fights MS. She is an MS advocate uh, doing things to help and move uh, our small group of culture through the world right now. It's uh, 2.5 million worldwide and we're hearing now that it's between 450 and a million in the United States that have MS uh, so you know things are changing things are changing and once again no one person is exactly the same so we may have the same disease but we all have different ways that we deal with it. We all have different symptoms. There are over a hundred different symptoms of MS. If it is easiest way for me to break it down to you, it would go like this. Take all the chronic illnesses that are out there. That's fibromyalgia, cancer, sickle cell, lupus, leukemia, that's cancer. Um, whatever it may be, uh, dementia, uh, anxiety, stress, all those things, throw them in a bowl, and those are all the symptoms that MS has, basically. Multiple sclerosis is basically the body, some of the cells and the nerves in the body start turning on itself and start attacking the nerves and trying to break down the nerves to protect itself. Because in the mind of the cells or the nerves, they are doing something to conserve uh, the body. But in actuality, it is basically a slow self-destruction of itself primarily in the brain and spinal cord and that affects your limbs as well as sens sensitivity you can possibly have heat tolerance cold intolerance you could have bladder problems sight problems problems speaking problem hearing You can have extreme fatigue. When I say extreme fatigue, I'll give you an example. Who gets tired after taking a shower and probably need a nap or to lie down? Probably someone with MS, fibromyalgia, or someone that's been going through chemo. And I will tell you, 99% of MS patients, warriors, survivors, all deal with that. And if it's a warm shower, forget about it. If it's a hot shower, you're useless. Or we're useless at that time. There are many things that we don't do the same anymore. And sometimes it takes you a little bit of time to figure out that it's actually happening. Or going that way. But. There is. A way for you to. 
get through it. And it may sound cliche to some people, but it's plain and simple. Don't give up, don't stop moving, don't stop trying, and don't stop believing. There are many things that we go through in life where if we sit back and look at it and say, well, I stopped doing this for no reason or with reason, and you reflect on it and you look at possibly someone that was with you that did not stop <coughs> and you could see their benchmarks. It doesn't mean that you would be in the exact same place. It just means that you may have in your mind, I don't know for you, but for me, I reflect on those things a lot, which are good and bad because you don't want to bring uh, that undue anxiety on yourself for nothing. But um, I'll use an example of if you're someone that has bad credit, and you can start that day to deal with it, to do something. You let five, seven years go by and you haven't done anything that you could have done to clear up your situation that would put you in a better predicament right now in the present day. But for whatever reason of quitting, giving up, not pursuing, taking the opportunity to do, you're still backed up seven years. So then you have to start back up then. And a lot of people say, well, you know, whatever. I, and they won't do it then. Until you're forced into a situation to have to. And then sometimes you can't at that time because you don't have the time, you don't have the resources, whatever it may be. It's the same way. Take advantage of the time and the opportunity you have now. Don't wait till later. Don't think, oh, well, I'm gonna get through it, get better, work it out. If I just do this, that, no. Do it now, take a chance. Because the alternative is not trying and not knowing. I don't know about you, but I can't take it at all. I'd rather go through it, fail through it, or win through it, but not just to sit back and, because one thing I hate is what ifs. So not to live in the what if lifestyle, you have to change a lot of what you are doing and a lot of stuff that you uh, may be thinking, maybe surrounding yourself around, uh, whatever it may be. Positive vibes only. That should be your motto. That should be your mantra. That should be in somewhere plastered in your bathroom, in your car, wherever it is. Because there's something that negativity can do that, you know, if you let it permeate, man, it can get really bad. So stay positive. You know, stay lifted up. If you're not around a positive community or organization, I got one for you. It's called Breathe University. Breathe University is an organization of positive, like-minded people that are all trying to progress in a positive manner. Brought to you by ETA. It's Eric Thomas and Associates. So check it out. BreatheUniversity.com. You can sign up. Uh, meet great people that will help you grow in whatever field you are in. I'm not talking about any of those Tony Robbins, um, all those other type of stories and things like that. Um, take the time to understand exactly what you are doing and why you're doing it. And know that it's never too late 
It's never too late. So don't give up, no matter what. I am living proof that what the doctors will say to you is not fact. They told me I wouldn't walk again. I'm walking. I walked into the studio this morning. Since February 10th, I made a decision that I would not be prisoner of my circumstance, so I metaphorically divorced myself from my wheelchair, trying to get a permanent situation, but I'm still in mediation, the mediation separation type of vibe, but I'm doing it. So that same doctor, Dr. Innocentes, that told me in Memorial Hospital that uh, you won't be walking again, son. Um, so get comfortable with how you were living and we're just going to manage it from here. But I have a loving older sister that basically put me on her back and said, let's go. And she helped me get through some of the hardest times I've probably had, period. Uh, and I'm thankful for my older sister for that. My older sister became my caregiver. And heaven sent isn't even, doesn't even, yeah. I love my sister. Shout out to Ventures, Joanne. Papillon Hill, happy three year anniversary. 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 <laughs> Man, anniversary. Yeah. Shout out to Queen Nathalie Charles. Shout out to Queen uh, Nicolo. Shout out to Queen Jada Carter. Yes. It's a tough road, but kind of crazy thing uh, that my caregiver, my sister, who cared for me since 2010, all the way to 2016, as my caregiver, out of nowhere gets diagnosed with MS out of nowhere and and as I say out of nowhere because there is no diagnosis for it at all I mean there's no hereditary there's it, it, MS is not hereditary um, you can't catch it there's nothing that you know that works like that but there are things that can trigger that can trigger it. And most of the times, that stress, heat tolerance or intolerance, or it can be environment or something else. But when that happened, it kind of, you know, hurt but we're going through it we're building through it we're living through it and that's all we can do that's all we can do no problem Aaron we will have Aaron on at 11 ish <laughs> I love my MS family, and that's how we roll. So, this next song is going out to Queen Aaron. Aaron fights MS. This is Boudreau. The name of the song is Champion. Don't jump up to this non stop turn on Christmas. Out of his mercy. What's the name of the world? Here, 
Shout out to Aaron Fights. Yeah, MF. We'll have Ron around 11 ish. Tell a friend. Blah! Champion. Boudreau. Tell somebody. It's MS Awareness Month. Take you back to 1990 something. Pepper Seed wasn't even out now. Yeah. Uh, shout out, Mark. Caribbean Student Union, FIU, University of Miami. Yeah, yeah, we know, we, we know Aaron. I pay attention. Shout out to class of 1997. Wow. You graduated in 1997? <laughs> High school? <laughs> Man. Shout out to class of 1992. Blah! Oh, the song. Yeah. Oh, uh, yes, the song came out in 1997. You're right. <laughs> Gargamel! 99! Kristen graduated high school in 1999. Interesting. Welcome, Vicky. Walk like us. Shout out to all my MS Warrior champions out there. Shout out to all my MS Warrior champions out there. Keep fighting. Good morning, Kiki. Good morning, Vicky. MS Strong, it's MS Awareness Month. Whoa, Christian from New York. What part of New York? You guys are online, let me know where you're from, where you are, how you're living. Once again, this is the MS Awareness Month show, and we'll be having our guest on uh, around 11 o'clock. Her name is Aaron Fights MS. She'll be sharing her stories, her ups and downs, and all that good stuff. And we're just vibing out with some buju and a few more. Um, shout, shout out to uh, Marshall, Texas, checking in. Vicky from Marshall, Texas, thank you for joining us this morning. Appreciate you. Uh, Kristen. Uh, she's repping NY, New York City. And Key said, yes, brother, we have to keep fighting and staying. Uh, Detroit is in the house. Kiki is checking in from Detroit. Uh, MS Queen from Detroit. How are you dealing with the cold weather uh, out there? Please let me know. Um, 
Are you better in cold weather or hot weather? It is a uh, intolerance question. Those of us that don't have, you know, that what happens with MS patients usually is the thermal regulator in our body is broken. So if you've ever had a car and it overheats and your fan may not come on, that's basically what happens with our body. Our fan does not come on uh, and we cannot cool down once we start heating up or getting cold. Uh, and for some, you have to carry around ice packs or uh, what I've had to do is, you know, to have the cooling vest. But Vicky out of Marshall, Texas says, heat is way worse for her, uh, saying that it's painful. In comparison for me, the cold weather is painful to me and pretty unbearable, pretty unbearable. Kiki from Detroit says she does better in the cold, okay? While Christian on IG says she does better in the cold as well, and she's living in Florida. Um, I don't know how people uh, don't do it, but some people can't take the humidity. Uh, one, Dee Dee Mosley, she can't really take the humidity that much, but she's better sometimes in the cold, but the moderate weather is what's usually good for um, some people. Vicky says cold hurts too, but better than heat. Yeah, all depends on who you are um, and how you are dealing with it. And dependent on your chronic illness and what stage you're in, that will really reflect on how and what you're feeling. You know, so whether it's MS, um, whatever it may be, just know that you have options. Shout out to Queen Maya Jones out there. Uh, she is, as we talked about earlier, a two-time ovarian cancer survivor. Uh, still doing her thing, still helping people, still being a light in those individuals' uh, um, lives that need it. Um, and she's gone through it, ups and downs. Oh, it's three times. Whoa. I, did, I didn't know it was three. She's a three-time ovarian cancer survivor. Blam. Yeah. So whenever you think that you uh, can't make it, there are people that are put in your lives and their stories are there to help us all grow and understand that it is possible. Impossible is nothing, not only for God, but period. You know, and possibilities help us get the technology that we have today. If you're seeing me online, or if you're hearing me online, it's only because someone thought of the impossible and made it possible. So, you know, Kiki says, uh, I have a cooling vest, but I stay indoors in the summertime, uh, right? Now. Yeah, but Kiki, you guys are, 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 are crazy out there, but yeah. Impossible is nothing once again. Once again, I know a couple people that have been in the same boat as me, Jeff Siegel, Suzette, in the hospital, can't move, can't talk, can't see, can't wipe yourself, can't do anything. And you have a doctor walk in and the doctor says, hey, I know I have you taking 27 pills a day, but those 27 pills are only maintaining you right now to be able to stay in this wheel, uh, uh, this hospital bed. That's it. 
27, so I'm taking 27 pills a day. I got to get up three times to go to recreational therapy, occupational therapy, and physical therapy. I look like a zombie because I'm like on three or four different opiates, two different muscle relaxers. Um, I was a walking, you know, a uh, little pharmacy. You were a walking pharmacy. You were a rolling pharmacy. I was a, sorry, as, as I was just corrected, I wasn't a walking pharmacy. I was a rolling pharmacy at the time. And that's correct. But, you know, somehow, some way, not somehow, some way, I got through it because I tried different things, got off those DMDs, went out of the country, did stem cells. And when I did the stem cell, they said it would take a, a minute for everything to catch up. And if you don't understand, that's like basically rebooting your system. Rebooting your system. And my friend Maya just reminded me that last time I saw her face to face, I couldn't talk. I forgot about that. And, you know, side note, I'll get back to what I was saying. I had a friend, <laughs> you know, tell me, man, I was contacting you during this time and I just thought you were ignoring me because uh, you just kept saying, responding, can't talk right now. And I said, Brandon, um, I couldn't talk right now. That's why I text, I can't talk. Um, so there, there, there are many times that we go through things and people don't really understand. But after the stem cells, they said it would take a while. But of course, whenever we go through procedures and things, we expect things to happen um, like a microwave. But it didn't take like that. It took a couple of years for things to start happening. And then fortunately I get a medication that is actually made for my form of MS. Because I went through the subtle chemo as well. Then I went to Sabri and then went to Ocrevius, which I'm on right now. And for me, it's made a world of a difference. Doesn't mean it's gonna work for you the same way, uh, but I am thankful that I have in my system, you know, when I look at the bill, it costs for a one session, $181 thousand dollars and 80 cents i don't know where they got the 80 cents from but that's for a seven hour infusion no that's what the bill says 80 cents 181 80 and when i look at the bill i was like wow okay um that that that's 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 something yeah and I don't know if it's because it's a new drug. I was able to get um, some of it subsidized by the actual drug company. And because I'm part of the MS uh, group at the University of Miami, um, they kindly use me as a study. So I get certain things um, cut down, but that's crazy how much these drug companies are making. But that's happens twice a year. Twice a year. Okay? Because you take it twice. Um, and Christian, I have my second dose in. Or well, my. No, I had my second dose. My, it would be my uh, fourth dose, will be in June. Will be in June. It's not look forward to it. Great to be sitting in a chair, um, being stacked up with a bunch of uh, drugs. And it's got to be strong that in one sitting, it stays into your system for six months, strong enough to 
help you. Okay? And that's right, Maya. Clinical trials do help. Uh, and you have to be open to uh, do them. MS Views and News right now has some clinical trials that are open. And in every state, they're doing clinical trials. You can try your MS Society. If it's for MS, you can try your fibromyalgia areas. If it's cancer, do your cancer research. Search. Uh, if it's lupus, do that as well. Whatever chronic illness is that you may have, uh, do that. Now, Christian says, Ocrevus depletes your white blood cells. Um, most of the, the disease-modifying disease drugs deplete your white blood cells and your immune system, period, um, in hopes that it kills off some of the bad as well so that you can start to regrow and everything builds back up. Yes. Six months of recovery. That's what Kristen said. So every time you take it, that's that's basically, you know, the transitions and what you go through. Now, once again, it's not easy. And I'm not saying go ahead and do it because not all of these situations are created equal. Not everyone is really honest in what they're doing and how they're doing it. So be mindful of where you're going, how they're doing it. If someone's just um, treating you to get stem cells and they're just going through your IV in your arm, there's a problem. There's a problem. It should be going straight lining into your uh big artery, usually around your neck, you know, somewhere around your neck there, and boom. Anything else, uh, they're just stealing your money. They're just stealing your money. So be careful, be wary, and just know that, you know, everyone's not honest. Everyone really doesn't want to see you get better. There are some people out here that just want to make money. Make money. But, on that note, I'm gonna play this song called Love Sponge. Huh. This is Buju. Shout out to the Arnaud family. Today, the Arnaud family, thank you very much, Maya, is celebrating the life of Carolyn English. That is the mother of Marissa, uh, my friend Marissa, uh, aunt to Mark, Roddy, um, a few other my friends. Today, 11 a.m. at Tabernacle Church near Little Haiti. So, shout out to the Arnaud family once again, the English family. Uh, Miss English will not be forgotten. Marissa and her brothers, great friends, great people. Um, yes, but this is Love Sponge, Buju. Doctor, ladies, I'm gonna know it's real. Exactly on the road, why feel? Shout out, Marie. Oh, baby. Oh, lady. Exactly, Vicky. I am PPMS, Primary Progressive. This one is So damn miserable, touch your friends, feel the fur off your coat, 
seen you walk away, seen my eyes in smoke, you're traceable, you kill me, I'll demand them after you get claim, you do something they just can't explain to the brain, yeah man shouldn't have no complaint, oh no, this one is called love as choice, I never know you would I really feel so nice, love sponge, I don't wanna let you go, with you I'm in the world, oh no, this one is called love as choice, is the way for us to enjoy the day always taking time to listen what she got to say she thinks i've been spending too much time on the beat i try to make her understand that's all we eat darling don't quarrel with me it hurts you too easily don't be messed up by silly tendency no no way this one is called love as choice i never know you would i really feel so nice love sponge I feel as if I'm upside down in this feeling Confess this girl is the ultimate thing What it means to be loved Need no asking Swing baby, swing while I continue Sing your favorite song Let's go dancing Hey, this one is called love as choice I never knew you would I really feel so nice Love sponge, I don't wanna let you go With you I'm in no hurry this one is called love as choice. I never knew you would. I really feel so nice, love sponge. I don't want to let you go. With you, I'm in no hurry. You're so lovable, peaceable, desire the inevitable. You're on 14 different drugs so now. I take a smoke and I nearly I know you can't list the 14, but what are the 14 you're on? All them on the mouth and you dead game, you do something. If none of them are opiates, so what are they doing for you? This one is called Love as Choice. I never know she would have really feel so nice, love sponge. I don't want to let you go. With you, I'm in no hurry. Oh, no. This one is called Love as Choice. I never know she would have really feel so nice, love sponge. Yes, that was Love Sponge. That was Love Sponge, but I'm gonna play this this record low, low. This is Sun Is Shining by uh, Mr. Bob Marley. <laughs> Great Sunday. Anti-depressant. Back with friends. All right. I may, if anything, I may periodic, periodically use oxybutin if I know that I'm going somewhere, and that's to help with the bladder. Um, I use baclofen sometimes, but not a lot because it really makes me like a it really makes me loopy and stuff, so um put it low. Mama Ross, welcome. New Vigil. Is that like Pro Vigil that gives you energy as well? A baclofen works to help relax me, 
but then it makes my body, you know, unrigid. Okay. Copaxone. I used to take Copaxone. I started off with Avanex or was it Beta Seron? One of one, either Beta Seron or Avanex. Then I went to the, the other. Then from there I went to Copaxone. Copaxone, I, I still kept having relapses. From Copaxone, I ended up having the stem cells. Stem cells had Sabri, Sabri Ophibus. How are you doing in California this morning? The first live because I got this nice little message. Your live video will be removed soon if you continue to broadcast music you don't have permission to use. All right. No problem. And then this sends me the stuff. Thank you. <laughs> You know, these things are connected. You can turn on the music. Turn just turn the music on. Yes. Um. No. So I could no. So I could hear it. Just song is not playing through here. So you guys won't be able to hear any music because if I play the music, then. They shut down the live, and you'll have to go to... I can turn it up in here, then. On this. On what? Oh, no, I can't. So why are we still playing it? <laughs> why wow, they shut me down? It's replaying. Yes. Hello? Oh. No, no, no. <laughs> wow, it's a crazy, crazy, crazy day here. Good morning, Tracy. Yeah, even when I say I don't own the rights in music, uh, they still give me problems and all types of stuff any which way so you know just to circumvent all that yeah yes so It's 11-ish, and we should be hearing from our guests soon, so Blackbeard on the lookout for that. Tracy, let us know where you're from, where you are checking in from, and please, this, uh, the first only DMT for me so far. Okay, and DMT is what exactly? Because I know disease modifying, oh, treatment. Okay, all right. And which one is that, Kiki?
What DMD are you on uh, at this time? Copaxone, all right. Now, do you have any problems with Copaxone? Like, when I used to take it, I used to have problems with where I was uh, doing the shot itself. Um, and that was a real big problem for me. Uh, but somehow, some way, like everything else, got through it. Uh, and I'm thankful for that. But how are your reactions to the drugs? And do you use any alternative drugs that help you in your fight with MS? Uh, we'd like to know because we like to share with others that may be going through some things that uh, they could get help from because once again there's no one fixed way to deal with everything you know so be open to alternative forms of medicine whether it's natural is the best way I would recommend you to go if you can do that find a natural means to get the nutrients and to give your body a rest. So let's say, for example, I'm on Ocrevus. I try to let Ocrevus be the pharmaceutical thing that's in my system and everything else I try to do as natural as possible. With my eating, past couple of, I would say past week has been um, up and down because there's been some celebrations and some uh, other events uh, where there's been some questionable food that I probably shouldn't have been eating. But I did, you know, be weary of those things and uh, yeah right sight reaction is is a big thing for me also as I did say uh, those knots make sure you can put some ice or a warm pad afterwards and don't leave it on your skin for more than 10 or 15 minutes um, and that may help alleviate some of the things that you're going through with those sight reactions from the DMDs that you're taking for your MS or whatever you're taking for that matter. If you have an MS, uh, just know if you're using heating pads or cooling pads, do not leave it on your skin for an extended amount of time because once again, your body does not thermoregulate anymore. Your thermometer in your body is broken. So you can go off steam, below, um, and not even know it until something may happen where you may fall out or something. But be mindful of those things because it does make a difference. It does make a difference. So... Don't forget, don't forget that. Stevens, thank you for checking in on IG. Yeah, it's Sunday, y'all. Think about it. 
So let me see that list over there. What's on that list? What list? This list? It's not a list. This is something I was writing. Yes, thermoregulator. Um, <coughs> there was a different word that they gave that, that I found yesterday, but I had to find a word that best described it where people can really understand. Um, and thermal regulator seems to be the best uh, that works because people don't really understand it. You know, uh, your body could heat up and, oh, just get into the AC. No. Nah. Because then your body flips. There was a time where the heat would make me cold. And you would touch my body, my whole body would be cold. Um, so it fluctuates. It all depends on what stage you're in, um, if your body's in repair, if you still have active lesions that are, you know, going. Because you can have lesions, and lesions are the areas in the brain and in the back where the nerves are damaged. They could either be actively still breaking down, or they can be dormant, or they can be regressing. I know people that have had, as myself, I had more lesions before that were active. Some of them slowed down, some of them are still active, um, but you still have to work at it. If you don't see your hand moving, keep sending the signal from your brain to your hand because once that dies all the way it is extremely hard extremely hard to get back and Vicky you had to be correct and I, I really don't know Vicky says I think hormones for women play a part too Hot flashes and MS are awful. I have to, uh, she's trying to call. So, our 11-ish call is um, trying to come through. Um, for whatever reason, I think we just hung up on her. No, she's still there. Um, we're trying to connect Hello. to Queen Erin right now. And if you're online Hello. and for whatever reason you're not able to Hello. hear our caller while we're on live, um, you can go to www.excitementradio.com, uh, hit the streaming button there. And you could hear much clearer. Good morning, Pascal. Queen Hernandez. Good morning, my family. All right, um, we're having some technical difficulties to get her on the phone, but we're almost there. We're almost there. It's Sunday, y'all, and we're live. <laughs> Woo! Please, um, once again, excitementradio.com is the station appreciation and praise is the show the appreciation and praise show where we give appreciation and praise to many individuals that are out there living doing their thing you know uh, that's what we do so, once again, um, share with us, let us know what's going on, but I'd like to welcome 
a champion, survivor, survivor, you know, Shiro, Queen, Aaron fights MS. How are you doing this morning? I'm surviving. <laughs> yes, you are doing more than surviving. You are um, a beacon of light that it is possible that uh, this disease will not take you down uh, no matter your situation. Uh, I've been okay. able to watch you um, and, I, and, I, and I tell people all the time, yeah, I got friends. They're like, yeah, did you meet? Yeah, yeah. I've got a lot of uh, internet friends that are like family to me. <laughs> and, and, and I get to watch the, your stories and, you know, the horses, your daughter. Um, when I learned back um, your stories of going through the stem cell situation, I went through the same thing. Um, and, and, and all these things and and to see your story chemo like so let's start from the beginning okay who is Aaron yeah. fights MS <laughs> when were you Aaron, diagnosed Aaron Aaron fights MS was diagnosed um, in 2001 okay 2001 2001 um, and that was from well symptoms started prior um but and that was you know numbness from the waist down just you know woke up and and went to a doctor and of course they give you like a z-pack or some craziness they just you know here take this you'll be good and um and that's what happened i took it um i was good a couple weeks later um and lived my life a few months, maybe, I don't know, maybe six months later, it happened again. And by that time, I had moved to Miami. And um, From where? From Dallas. Okay. I'm from Chicago. L moved to Dallas um, for a little while, about a year and a half, and then moved to Miami. Okay. And, um, you know, the young, crazy days, hey, you want to move here? Let's go there, you know? Right. <laughs> um, and when I came to Miami and that happened, um, I actually saw you know a doctor who cared and wanted to look into, well, why were you numb six months ago and now you're numb again? And we did some tests and you know then the fairy dust pops open and you're like, hey, you have a mess. So um, that's kind of how that story went. And when you heard those words, uh, well, first. Your doctor in Miami is who? Um, well, it, it's not. I've I've been through a few of them. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I I went. Well, the the doctor who you know said those words, um, he was actually quitting his practice because um, he was you know old and and done. You know, so I actually went to. That wasn't um, survival, was it? <laughs> Zweibo was actually um, the person that I, I went to after this guy and um, I don't really have the greatest things to say about Zweibo I don't um, either I don't either oh well good because he <laughs> um, <laughs> and I'm, I'm not here you know to to um, best doctors but I actually um, I was asked not to come back to their office again because um, I just didn't have the kind of words. You know, he was kind of looked. Um, you know, he's the one who did additional testing and did the diagnosis, and it was literally about a 60-second appointment. You know, you have a match. You're not going to walk someday. Yeah. Take this med and, and call me in five. Yeah. You know, and and I was like, really? Did that? just happen, you know, um, kind of wipe up your tears and, um, and go about your life. Um, and then I actually found Dr. Ramirez Calderon, which is uh, amazing. Uh, um, I saw him for a long, 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 long time. And he, like, maybe within the last year, he doesn't take my insurance anymore. So I don't see him anymore. And I actually found another 
neurologist Andrew Rao, and I can't even think of his name at the moment, but he is a blessing. Um, he's amazing. So, um, but I'm not a big doctor person. I really don't go see um, my MS doctors that often. I, I'm not big on MRIs. I don't take meds. So, um, I don't have too many other MS doctor stories to tell. <laughs> It's just no problem. I, I had the same situation with Zweibel. Um, I yeah. had to see, uh, I think it was Alfonseca, who was the young lady that saw me before him. Mm -hmm. he, he just came by very quickly, pew, was out of there. And I never went back. Yeah. I never yeah. went back. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I ended up going and seeing Dr. Sharmada. Okay. And, and and that's where I was, but I wasn't. I'm I'm somewhat like you. The only thing that I take now is Ocrevus, of uh, MS okay. meds. Uh, I've been thinking about it. And yeah, it's 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 been promising, um, and it's been the only thing that is actually that I can say I've seen an actual difference, other than when I had to reboot my system and did the stem cells mm -hmm. and everything. But mm -hmm. yes. But not me. We're talking about you today. Um, <laughs> so I have a question. Like, I, I, I see that you went through a chemotherapy stage. Yes. When did that come about and why was that an option for you? That, um, the MS got really, really bad really, really fast. Um, I... I, I did the Copaxin, I did the, oh my gosh, what is it, um, Avanax or whatever that is. Beta Sarah. I did, yeah, I did all of those at the beginning when I was first diagnosed, and the side effects were just terrible. Um, so I did them for a couple of years, maybe maybe two to three years I did those, and um, I mean, it was just like life changing. I mean, I just felt terrible all the time. So. I had stopped meds, um, and I stopped working um, to focus on my health and, um, you know, my, my husband is like my doctor. I mean, he's amazing, and, you know, everything that he does is like wrapped around my health, and I think that really has, you know, such a huge part of why I've been good for so long. Um, and with all of that um, 2000 I think 2013 I started noticing a little bit here and there little a little some you know changes um, in in my gait and 2014 was like the year of falling um, huh. I fell all the time <laughs> um, and a bad fall um, and my MS just the progression of it in 2014 was just unbelievable and really life consuming I mean I just Aaron wasn't Aaron anymore and so then I, I started looking you know what am I going to do you know this is not not going to happen, you know. Um, so we started looking into, um, you know, treatments and, and whatever, and we found HSCT. Um, and actually, I had discovered HSCT years prior, which kicking myself in the ass now because I wish I would have done it sooner because you really want to catch it, you know, when, you're, when your symptoms aren't that bad. Now, just um, for clarification... You said H S C T. Please explain right. to people what H S C T means. Um, it's some I can't pronounce the first word. It's some like chemical topic, something, whatever. I can't pronounce that first word. Um, stem cell treatment. Um, stem cell treatment. Um, and I'll explain to you um, what that is. It's they go in and and um, take. A certain amount of stem cells, you know, pretty much as many as they can get, 
um, and treat those stem cells uh, and then deplete your immune system. I mean, you, your immune system is absolutely 100% gone. You're in the negative, basically. Um, and then they take those stem cells and give them back to you um, to reboot your immune system. So I don't have that faulty immune system like I did before. Um, some people, they come out with HSCT. I've seen people, I know people who have, you know, gone from cane and wheelchair um, to walking again. Um, and for me, I've stopped progression, which has been great. I have some lesions that have been shrinking. It's been great. Um, and that's been for four years now. Um, but that's what had happened. I, I found HSCT years prior and I was like, I'm not going through chemo. I'm not, I'm not doing that. Um, and then when I actually needed it, um, you know, I was, I was doing pretty bad and, um, I applied for it, they denied me, um, and I, you know, fought like hell to get it, you know, I, I no, you're going to approve me, um, <laughs> and then I went to, um, then I went to Chicago and, and did all of that, and, um, I applied in December of 2014, and I had the treatment started in May of 2015, so. And you did that with Dr. Burnt? Dr. Richard Burt, Richard K. Burt, um, at, out of Northwestern in Chicago. Yes. Our mm -hmm. stories are so similar. <laughs> yeah. My, my, aunt, my aunt works in that uh, hospital. Oh, okay. Uh, well, she works in both of them. One there and one in the south, south side, I think it's south side hospital. Okay. Uh, south side is the hospital that's really bad, right? That's, yep. Yeah, that's 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 the one that she also works in, but um, in 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 seeing uh, like yesterday, I see that you were really tired, and we were talking about fatigue before you came on, and how it really affects you. And I used an example of what happens when we take a shower, let alone a warm or hot shower um mm -hmm. after getting out of the shower we basically need to have a nap or a little bit more fatigue and, yeah. and and you know as i saw what you were doing yesterday um and i'm talking about your um <laughs> you're wanting to get a um a helpmate to uh to clean up um and and there are many days that we want and need those things. Um, yeah. How do you do it being uh, a mother, a wife, uh, going through these trials and tribulations uh, for those that are listening to you and, and understanding that it didn't just happen overnight? Uh, yeah. What is the best way that you would say to actually traverse and travel through that? Um, I have, I don't say it enough. I say it too much. I, I say it just nonstop, um, is your mindset. Um, that, there's just nothing more that can pull you through than a clear mindset. Um, you can have the, the most support around you you can have the least support around you but it's finding what works for you um, it's listening to positivity all the time um, deleting people out of your life that do nothing for you um, I think a lot of us settle um, for the way things are and they just accept it um, and that's 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 going to knock you down um, you know to keep those situations or those people um, in your life that I mean I, when you have something like this you come first um, and 
I, I always, you know, oh, no, you have to put your, you know, your spouse and, and your daughter first. Well, in order for me to put them first, I have to put myself first. Huh. Um, because I, I, I can't, I can't do if I'm not good. <laughs> I exactly. can't do for them. I can't do for anybody else if I'm not good. So I come first and I make sure that, you know, everything, um, everything is, is good. And I speak what I need. You know, I can't assume that people know. I can't, um, you know what I'm saying? I cannot, I cannot just expect. So I speak it. Maybe sometimes I'm a little bit too harsh of what I need. <laughs> but, but no, I mean, you just, um, you have to create a good circle for yourself. Um, and I think there's a lot of avenues out there that, um, that people need to look into, that people need to extend themselves to. The IG community, family, is huge um you know i think i think those things are good avenues for people um just start talking to people if you if you don't have someone if you don't if you need that support system it's here on instagram i'll tell you that yes, yes. <laughs> so. it is, it's, it, that's definitely uh, correct i i hard pressed to think um i listen to a lot of eric thomas uh and mm -hmm. his videos and stuff and he had this video that kept playing this week and it was about what we need to do uh, as leaders and individuals and understanding that we need to take care of ourselves first yeah. because uh, he used the analogy of being on a plane where um, the gas mask is coming down but yes, you're I use that all the time right you, you, you're trying to give everybody air you know, but not understanding that while you're giving them your air and their air and whatever air they could pull away and grab from, you are dying yeah. at the time. And what happens when you die off, then the others are hurt more than the difference. So many times it's, it's uh, I'm not a parent, I'm a godparent. But as a parent, mm -hmm. I, I would know that, I would think that, you know, you know you're going to worry about your children. And, no, you got to, hey, your kids can't get anywhere because they can't drive. So if you're not yeah. good or your spouse isn't good, hey, they can't get where they need to get to. And then it becomes like a domino effect and everything starts falling back. And then that's when the stress really comes. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and, and that stress that comes is something that, can throw us off of our track, trigger something else, and, you know. Now, what was the first thing that you thought of when you were, when, when they told you, uh, you have MS? What was your reaction? Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's, a, that's a good answer. <laughs> that, that, was, um, that was my reaction. I think that's what I said on the phone, too. Um, cause it was a phone call. They told you um, over the phone? They told me over the phone because I kind of demanded it. Um, I, you know, I, I was like kind of one of those, look, I'm, I'm not coming in. You know, the results, just tell them to me on the phone. You know, it was, that was kind of me. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I, um, yeah, I think there's a lot of things with doctors as well that, that people say, oh, no, I have to. No, this your health. It's your paying for it. You tell them what you want. So I demand a lot out of my doctors. But, um, um, yeah, I just, I think my, I was at work, actually. Wow. Um, and I, I just must have gone pale white. Um, because, and I had actually just started um, a new job for a few months, and you know, one of my trainers was like, you know, oh my gosh, are you okay? And you know, I I actually told them what I had just found out, and 
they're like, you know, look, you can take the rest of the day off if you need to. And I was like, no, no, you know, I, I don't know. I just, I, that's really all I thought, you know, um, and I just, I don't know if I didn't take it as serious or I was just confused because I didn't know about it. Um, I was just kind of dumbfounded, you know, that's, and I just started researching, you know, what kind of, of meds am I going to have to take? I really didn't look at my long forecast of MS. I really looked at it as what am I going to do right now? So. Hmm. And were you married at the time? Uh, no, I was, um, so 2001, I had, I had actually started dating um, just in 98, so it was a little bit of a, a, a fresh relationship. Wow. Um, yeah, but I, I had actually, I mean, long story short, I actually met my husband when I was 15, um, just worked with him you know and separate you know went our separate ways I just knew him I didn't I didn't date him and then met him again when I was 18 um hey don't I know you oh yeah I know you whatever da, da, da. and then met him again when I was 21 Incredible. and that's when, that's when we started dating so um, and I actually gave him the out you know I said look this is what just happened today um it, you're kind of, you know, I mean, we were young and, and party days and um, hardcore party days. And, um, you know, I just, we were best friends and, and um, each other's companion. And, and I just kind of said, look, you, you don't have to stay through this. You can go. And, and um, he just kind of told me I was crazy. So. Um, you got you, oh, yeah. you you got a right one because I, I gave my ex wife the out and she took it so and she took it yeah. oh yeah so right. well you know <laughs> <laughs> you, you got I, you got a um no you, you got a good one I'm I'm sorry that she did that because she made a mistake no, so uh, because I I see what you do here I see your love and your compassion and I can only imagine you you know sharing that to um, you know a, a female and, and loving somebody is, is your your compassion here and your dedication I, I know that would go on to you know another human being that can love you just as much so I'm sorry for her <laughs> wow wow thank you I'm loving Aaron more and more no <laughs> <laughs> Be told, be told. <laughs> um, yeah, but but you know, I, I have to say this. It, um, many times when we get diagnosed, there's a new diagnosis. Sometimes we forget that our spouses or companions are actually going through something too. So, yeah. you know, I, I want to be mindful, say that, yeah, there are things that, you know, I, I hear exactly what you're saying, um, yeah. but I was a walking zombie at the time on all these pills that the doctors gave me and it's not an excuse it's just what it was so i wasn't really myself in thinking about what was actually going on how it was going on and you know as, as i reflected and i look back and you know sometimes you may say um uh man i, I shouldn't have given up or this and that but it is what it is and it's supposed to happen how it's supposed to happen but Thank yeah, you for those agreed. kind, kind words. You're but, so very welcome. Um, it is amazing uh, when I see you getting out, getting into your car, driving, mm -hmm. um, moving around. Like, how long did it take you to, to, to feel comfortable to do that? to get up and get out um, um as, as from when though as from 
Um, what do you mean? You get, I see you, you, you drive, am I correct? Yeah. With hand controls. <laughs> With hand controls. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do the, 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 the same thing. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I have, um, my sister just came up in the studio and she's um, dancing like she's in the Luke video. I don't know what's going on here. St. Patrick's Day. St. Pat Saint Patrick's Day? That's why you're doing that? My great-grandfather was Irish. I'm so oh. happy. Yes. She go. said her great-grandfather was Irish, so she is um, there you go. twerking. Um, <laughs> but before, before I get into the driving part, I see that you, you listen to a lot of conscious reggae like <laughs> all the time whatever it is i hear reggae going on and i'm like well okay she jamaican is she from st croix um the love of reggae comes from where um one of my best friends is from trinidad okay and um, I see him just walk every single day, and that's what we listen to. Um, Is that the beach barbecue guy? The beach barbecue guy. Two weeks um, ago, you guys were by the beach. Um, yes. That's yes. him. Okay. Mm -hmm. I got you. Um, yeah, and um, really, though, come, I've always loved reggae. I mean, you always, you know, sit back and, and listen to it, you know. Um, but coming to Miami... It's so many cultures, and it, it grew really, you know, when, when you move here, it's really, I'm the minority in Miami, so. Really? <laughs> um, yes, yes. I mean, think of, you know, how many cultures are here. Right. You know, you, you know, when we, I'm from a very small town. Um, in Chicago, very close to Wisconsin. Um, so, you know, there's... Wait, wait, wait. wait. There's, you, you were born in Chicago? Yes. So where does yes. the accent come from? I, you are not... You are probably like the 600th person who says that. Everyone says I have an accent, and I, I don't... I'm, I don't know what accent that is. <laughs> what? It, it, yeah. You sound um, Caribbean. No. Um, she sounds country uh, white. No, she does. She okay. sounds country it's, white. It's, it's, Every, everyone country says that. White. Everyone says, I don't know where you're from, but I'm, I don't know. I don't, I don't hear an accent. It just has to be going from Chicago to Dallas to Miami. I don't know. Okay. Uh, I, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right. Well, my, my cousin knows it could I, I hear you. I hear you. So that's that's where the love of, of the music comes from. All right. I got it. Yeah. Yeah. Got yeah. it. I don't remember what we were talking about, though, when we started talking about music. <laughs> um, the positivity and why uh, reggae. Why is oh, reggae yeah. a, a, a... Yeah. And, and really, um, I... I mean, I also listen, you know, to a lot of hip hop, um, and a lot of times when I listen to it, uh, you know, it's more for working out. It's more for um, cleaning my mindset. You know, when I need to um, just fight really hard because the lyrics are so ridiculous. Um, so, <laughs> you know, when I when I need a good workout or um, you know, something more intense, that's what I listen to, but, I mean, I think reggae, um, soca, and, and all of that, it's, it's on probably in my house 70% of the day, so, yeah. Got you, got you. Man. It's just good to listen to. Yes. You know, I, I love what they have to say. Um, it's, it's, um, for the most part, you know, yes, you can have your raunchy lyrics there, too, but, for the most part, it's just it's just good, you know? It's just to have a good life and respect your family and, and your friends and do good. And and that's, you know, that's what I like to listen to. So. Now, Vicky from, Vicky Beetle from, um, she is from Texas. 
She says you have a Dallas accent. And she wants to know what kind of workouts you do. I have a Dallas accent. That's interesting. Yeah, I, <laughs> I only lived there for a year and a half. But um, <laughs> um, what kind of workouts do I do? Um, I do what's good for me that day. Um, I actually, I'm going to start, I'm going to try and start going to the gym again. But um, I do a lot on my floor mat. Um, I do have some of my workouts on my Instagram, but um, I do a lot of uh, heel lifts, um, a lot of leg lifts. I also work my arms more now because you know I, I use a wheelchair part time, and um, I I really I look around and and I see what's on Instagram. I do a lot of yoga, um, so I do things like that. What what feels? I just make sure that I'm on the floor. And whatever comes to me, you know, of, of whatever I can do, I, I do it at that time. Um, my, my friend who I spoke about before, um, he used to train and, and um, you know, worked out all the time. So I get a lot from him, too. So, um, you know, it's, you do what you can do to make you feel good. There's a lot of uh, fitness programs that are out there, but... Um, whatever feel good, feels good that day. I just always making sure I'm lifting my hips and um, my ankles because I have a lot of foot drop. Um, you know, so anything to strengthen that. Great, great. Now, hmm. and Vicky, if you want to check anything out, you can go on Instagram and check out Aaron Fights MS, and you can also do that on Facebook. And you can see the videos um, of some of her workouts there as well as most of everything we've been talking about. Um, now, we're running up on our time, but if there's one thing you would say to a newly diagnosed or diagnosed person with MS, mm. what would it be that you would tell them? Mm. Mm -mm -mm. That is a really tough question. Um, <laughs> um, I would think I would tell them to breathe. I think I would tell them to breathe and, and that it's going to be okay. Um, immediately find your support system. And if you don't have one, get one um, it's going to be you know a long road but your life's not over you're not going to die from MS um, clear your mind you know get ready because it's you know you you have to make the best of what you have you have to you don't have a choice so accept it, um, and and find your support system. You know, I think I think I, I, something along those lines is what I would say. That was perfect, actually, and, <laughs> and and I can't thank you enough. Um, I've been hounding you for a little bit. Uh, to, <laughs> I'm gonna be back to come on here. I would love for you to come back. You just tell us that. when. Um, got it. And I appreciate you for sharing your story, not only today, but also um, knowing that you make a difference in my life to be able to see what you're doing day to day. And I know a couple of people, Justice Barron, um, Suzette, yeah. Jeff uh, Siegel, uh, um, Kristen, AY. Shout out to all of them. Um, there's a lot of us, Nigel, um, that yeah. support you and learn from you and are able to move by the things that you do um, without you even knowing it. So we're giving you all the appreciation and all the praise. Uh, Queen Aaron fights MS. Thank you for being 
the consummate survivor um and thank you for being here for our ms awareness month show impossible is nothing and you show that every day and this song as we go out is dedicated to you aaron have a great day and know that we love you ms strong always and enjoy your day Thank you. Thank you. Hey, hey, we're waiting. We're waiting. We're waiting. Thank you. (laughs) Love you. Have a great day. Love you. You too. All right. Enjoy the song. Have a good week. See you next week. Oh, God, I'm